Okay, so I'm gonna go over a wrist lock from Side Control. It's a really sneaky wrist lock, and it's one of those things that it's like kind of tricky. Like it can take someone by surprise, and it's one of those things that's not gonna work 100% of the time. And if they know the trick, it's a little hard for them. Or it's a little hard for you to actually finish. But if um, they're not aware of it, or you just catch them when they're not really paying super close attention to what you're doing to their wrist, it can be really effective. And uh, is your left wrist bad? It's all good. So I should probably do it on this. Right, yeah. But we can do it. So just lay this way. The other way. Look around. Yeah. So from top side control, let's do this way a little bit. Ugh. Top side control, whenever you put shoulder pressure, most of the time the guy's reaction is going to be pushing on your neck or framing any sort of way like this to try and relieve some of that shoulder pressure and possibly like go to like shrimp and hip escape. So you can usually count on them having that wrist there. So when this happens, there's a really good opportunity for a wrist lock. And the way to do it is they don't really expect it because what you're doing is sort of what you would do anyways if someone's pushing on your neck. If they go to push on your neck and I actually push away, usually you're gonna like grab it, their arm in some way or another. So what you're doing here is instead of trying to like push it off or like go like this or anything, all you're gonna do is try and pull his wrist down so that the palm is on your shoulder or on your, like the front of your chest and shoulder. As long as his wrist is bent and his palm is on the front of here, on the front of your body, instead of like over the top of your shoulder or something like that, you'll be able to do the wrist lock. So I'm pulling his wrist here and then once it's in this position, I'm gonna reach over and grab his elbow. At the same time I'm doing it, I'm keeping my left hand on his wrist to keep his hand in place. Okay, because if, if uh, he starts to realize that I'm wrist locking him, he may try and spaz out and pull his wrist out. So what I need to do is when I'm here and I start to reach over, I immediately lock down tight with this hand on his wrist here. Now you can see as I start to put pressure forward, it's gonna be harder and harder for him to move his arm. Because I've isolated his elbow here, this is very important. I'm grabbing his elbow so I can force his wrist to bend. Now because of the gi and because I have a pressure here, it's very hard for him to actually move his hand. There's a lot of friction, as well as just the pressure on his elbow here, keeps it pretty stuck. The only way you can really resist is pinching his elbow down, which is actually what I want. Because if he pinches his elbow down here, it gives me a really solid thing to base off of because his elbow gets pinned on the mat when I lean forward. And you can start to see how this is a wrist lock. His wrist is bent here. He forces his elbow down to try and defend. That's when I keep my hand in place on the wrist. I'm just taking it off so I can show you the wrist here. But I keep my hand in place here and you're just gonna lean forward and put pressure. Okay? So you can force this to happen too, if, even if he has his hand on this side, like this. If you're just comfortable here in side control and he's not trying too hard to escape and like wriggling everywhere, as long as you have a good control here, all you do is start to like threaten something like a Americana or anything here that it's gonna make him wanna bring his elbow in to defend. Okay? If usually if you start to try and do something like this, they're gonna tuck their elbow in to defend. When that happens, I'm doing the same thing. I just want his hand to be on the front of my shoulder. You don't want it too much in the middle because then you're not getting the leverage on his arm that you need, on his wrist, I mean. So you want it to be kind of on your shoulders, almost in front of your neck. Another thing you can do is if your hand, if this hand is busy, like say it's here, I can't, my, my weight's on my elbow, so I can't really like reach up and grab it. It's awkward and it creates too much space. So what I do instead is I can pinch my chin over his wrist. So I'm just holding here. I can pinch my chin over his wrist and I reach and I'm like covering my eyes, almost like I'm doing a dab. <laughs> so I cover my eyes like this. What that does is as I pinch and cover my eyes, it really locks his hand in place even more. Now he can't, you can't slip your hand, he can't slip his hand out. Cause for him to actually escape, he can't bring it down cause that doesn't help him actually relieve any pressure. It makes it tighter. So he has to bring his hand up. So if I cover my eyes like this, it really locks his hand in place and he can't slide it anywhere. Then all I need to do is just grab the elbow and drive in. So there's kind of two ways to do it. You can do it from, from shoulder pressure position here where your arm, this arm is free. In this situation, you're just grabbing his wrist bringing pressure forward, making sure his, his fingers are like on the front of your shoulder here. Just like this, grabbing the elbow, driving in. If you pull his elbow up and he doesn't bring it to the mat and he just leaves it here, you just go both hands to the elbow and drive in. You don't have to force it to the mat. You can if you want and then drive forward. This is a submission that it's just fast. There's no like, you have to be really careful doing this on your training partners because it's like this way, the wrist doesn't have a lot of um, give. This way it can be have a little more give. Sometimes some people are more flexible, but with wrist locks, you have to be careful because people sort of tap fast. If you do it too hard, you could hurt someone's wrist. So it's one of those things, you really wanna make sure you have it locked in tight 
in training at least, and then go slow. In competition, you can do it fast, and they should just tap right away because they, you know, they're gonna tap or it's gonna get hurt. So it, in competition, it's really effective because it can be put on really fast and make a guy yelp. And if he just makes any sort of noise, it's a verbal tap by the rules in IBJF. So I'm just gonna either pinch my, grab his wrist here, make sure his fingers are stuck on my shoulder, grab his elbow, drive in, or if I have it the opposite way, where my arm is underneath, and he doesn't have his arm in front of my face like this, I reach like I'm doing an Americana, what's he gonna do? Tuck his elbow in to defend, right? If I go like this, what's he gonna do? Bring his elbow in to defend. That's what I want, here. In this situation, I use my, hand, my free hand to go to, my, to go to his hand to force onto my shoulder and I pinch with my chin and then I cover my eyes. His fingers are almost on the side of my cheek, like this, on the side of my cheek and in front of my shoulder. That's how I'm pinching his hand in, the, in a position where he can't slide it out to escape. Pinching here, grab the elbow, try and lift and drive. So you're pulling and driving. It doesn't matter if his elbow comes up or not. Even if he keeps it and resists tight here, I'm still pulling up because I need to pull up to force his hand even more like this. If it's down, I can go here, but if I go up, now I have two points of pressure. I'm not just driving here, I'm also pinching it together, like a scissor motion. So here, you pinch it with your chin. You can't see? I pinch it with my chin, and I cover my eyes. And this hand that's covering my eyes goes to the elbow, and then you drive it. To finish it, all you're doing is just putting your shoulder down to the mat putting a lot of pressure down. You, obviously, if you need to finish it hard, you would don't, don't actually have your hand here, but you would drive, go up on your toes, and turn even more to actually put a ton of pressure to finish it. So it's just a wrist lock like that. It can be really sneaky from, uh, it can only really be done from top side control. You can also do it from half guard, but it's not as effective because people can sort of bridge you up and off, like on your back, I'll put through this side. So it can be done in the same way from half guard, but you don't get the sort of, you don't, your body's not uh, moving out this way. So if I try and go here like this, I have to like take off my half guard. I want to sort of be to the side because I'm putting pressure forward and that's, that's just moving his wrist up. It's not actually pinching it down. See like pressure this way, moving this way is what would finish the wrist lock. Putting pressure forward doesn't do anything. That's why from half guard it's not as effective, but some people can still pull it off from half guard. So it's here, your side control. Grab the wrist, pull the elbow, or pinch the wrist with your chin, and reach over, grab the elbow, both hands to the elbow, and drive forward. This slick one. Have you seen that one before? <laughs>